Matt Levi Investigates is brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. Hawaiian Electric, the Hawaiian Electric companies creating a smarter, stronger, and more resilient electric grid. Hawaii Pacific Health, creating a healthier Hawaii. The Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. HMSA, caring for our kupuna and Hawaii's families. It's our promise and our privilege. Kamehameha Schools, Stanford Car Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. Uh, okay. Possible overdose. Well, uh, so the really need to really cannot stand up. Are you okay, with how are you? Yeah, I'm with her right It is a vital resource that most of us take for granted. A public service measured in fractions of seconds that can mean the difference between life and death. When we call 911, we count on paramedics to be there fast. With emergency medical care, seconds, minutes matter. For a patient out there, it is a crisis. If somebody can't get the ambulance or the help that they need in a few minutes, it can turn into a dangerous situation. A dangerous situation is now at our doorstep. Nearly a million people live on Oahu. More than five million visited last year. Even more are expected to arrive here this year. But as the demand for service grows, the number of ambulances remains the same. Tonight, we investigate EMS, state of emergency. I'm hoping that, you know, the public understands that there are only 20 ambulances on this island. And that sometime when they call 911, they may have to wait. Chief, candidly, what is the situation as far as EMS is concerned? Well, you, you want to use the word crisis, the, the word is, the, um, we will be there shortly. We, will be able, we won't be able to handle much more with just the resources that we have. They are being pushed to the limit. What do you think is the biggest misconception about your department? I think people just don't really know what we're able to do back here. We can breathe for somebody back here. We can provide um, uh, medications, we do CPR. I don't know that everybody quite understands. It is an emergency room on wheels with highly trained medical professionals working tirelessly, responding on average to more than one call every hour on 12-hour shifts. Because it could be a friend, could be a family member, you know, could be, could be you, you know. Sorry, you're going to have to wait because we don't have an ambulance to respond. 20 ambulances to cover nearly a million people, along with a seemingly endless stream of visitors. By comparison, the city of Boston has 673,000 residents, but nearly twice as many ambulances. Each year, the Department of Health, which oversees EMS, has asked the legislature to fund more ambulance lines year after year they have been denied. Why wouldn't something as important as ambulance service be just funded? I think those are good questions, and I think we don't necessarily have the answers to those questions. We know we have to fund the hospitals on the neighbor islands. So what do you choose? Hospitals, schools, emergency medical services, DLNR and emergency services for that, you know, so it becomes, and then it's... Is there a choice that needs to be made or can both be funded? Not when we don't have enough revenue coming in. So what does that mean if you're the one calling 911 for help? Join us as we look at how this agency is surviving on the budget it has. Next, Inside the Rig. Our Yunji Denise has a front row seat when paramedics go out on call. Healthier is ordinary lives made possible by extraordinary care. 
For decades, our integrated team of experts has helped cancer patients become cancer survivors. Hawaii Pacific Health. Over the last seven years, Hawaiian Electric has invested $1.5 billion to update and upgrade the electric grid. Thousands of poles, transmission lines, and equipment have been replaced, reducing the number of outages. However, if you do encounter a downed power line, call 911 and stay at least three car lengths away. Remember, the line can still be energized, even though it appears harmless. Find out more at hawaiianelectric.com slash resilience. When I retired, I thought I'd be taking it easy. But with family and friends, I've never been busier. So having my doctors and clinics all nearby is more important than ever. At HMSA, we make sure you have convenient access to the health care you need. No other plan offers a larger network of doctors, hospitals, and neighborhood clinics. I've counted on HMSA all these years, and I still do. To learn more, visit HMSA.com. The workday is just beginning for the paramedics of Metro One. <laughs> it's a race to get everything done before we get that call. Laura Kumamoto and her partner John Kusano are at the start of a 12-hour shift from their station in the heart of Makiki. They never know what the day will bring, but they can count on it being busy. John and I have had a 22-call shift. We've also had a 20 and 21 call. Our average is about 15 calls. In 12 hours? In 12 hours, yeah. On this day, like clockwork, the calls come. They are dispatched to a home in Manoa. Uh, okay. Possible overdose. Well, it's an adult female who claims she swallowed a bunch of antidepressants. The woman says she's suicidal. She's treated and taken to the emergency room. Soon after leaving Queens, the next call comes in. I cannot stand up. Okay, how old are you? 70. An elderly woman in pain suffering from an infection. She needs to get to the hospital right away. They are barely back on the road when another call comes over the radio. I'm kind of out of it, not really responding. I mean, he's alert, I mean, he's awake, but not uh, very lucid. A man with a multitude of medical issues has likely overdosed on opioids. Don't move your arm, my friend. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Again and again, they are dispatched to the next call, the next person in need. Uh, she is really deteriorating. Are you with her right now? Yeah, I'm with her right now. It is a dizzying day of stress, stopping and starting, lifting, carrying, and calming people. There is no textbook, only experience that comes from years of training, trying to lessen the fears of patients they've never met, many now entering the worst hours of their lives, all while negotiating traffic, where the urgency of those sirens seems to have little effect on the sea of drivers. From the back of the rig, they are on the phone with the ER, so doctors can be ready for whatever this team brings through their doors. And we're basically a um, miniature emergency room on wheels, and we are that, that liaison between the patient and the doctor at the hospital. Kumamoto has been at this for 23 years. This rig and what happens in it is her life. She's never done anything else, and she's never wanted to. And I was fortunate enough to just stumble upon EMS by going to Kapi'olani Community College. And the first day, first day that I did a ride along, I knew at age 18, this is what I wanted to do. But she's also seen the changes. The call volume has skyrocketed. More than 100,000 calls came into the EMS Dispatch Center in 2016. They're on pace to exceed that this year with already 7,000 more calls than at the same time last year. Contrary to what some believe, the homeless are not overly represented in those calls. There are just 20 ambulances covering the entire island. Hers is one of five in town where the call volume is the highest. You know, when you're going on call after call, how do you deal with all that stress yourself? By the end of the shift, you're, you're pretty, 
tired. And I, I think it's not just the, the physical activity of lifting and carrying, it, it's just the mental stressors that have been building up throughout, throughout this shift. You know, you've been doing this for more than two decades, but the burnout has to be pretty high. There's got to be some people who just can't do it. I've seen a lot of people come and go. It's too taxing. And whether it's too stressful on themselves or it's just stressful to try and have a family and do this job, and it, it's just not made for everyone. For an emergency medical technician, or EMT, to become a paramedic with the advanced skills of Kumamoto or Kusano, they must study for a year at Kapiolani Community College, train in the field, and then take a certification test. That process costs the state $122,000. When someone burns out or leaves, that time and money spent goes with them. Done. Two as day goes into night, more calls, more urgency. My least favorite types of calls are actually pediatric calls. I do not like getting those types of calls. I do not like seeing sick or injured children. She can't control where she's sent or what she sees, but Kumamoto says that having just even one or two more ambulances to lighten the load would make a world of difference for her and for those calling 911 for help. It's not only because we want to make sure that we're not running those 15 to 20 calls per shift for us. It's a matter of that extra ambulance that would be able to get to that stroke patient sooner to start treatment, to start transport to the hospital, is life-changing for the patient and the families. I mean, it must be frustrating when you see that that's getting turned down year after year. It is. It's not an EMS thing. It's not just an EMS request. It's to serve the community better. Serving the community is what drives her and so many others who do this work. Honolulu EMTs and paramedics earn between forty-seven and sixty-nine thousand dollars a year, a salary that falls below Honolulu's in median the, income. You're, you're not in it for the money. You're not in it for the perks. Like why? No. Do you, why do you keep coming back? It, it is knowing that I, that I've made a difference. You know, unfortunately, we we can't save everyone, but. We're going to do everything within our being to, to do what we can to keep them in their loved ones' lives. And I think that's why a lot of us do it. Coming up, ripple effect from the rig to inside the ER. Queen, Queen, Nurse Advisory, Jesus, Metro One. Yes, that's correct, Queen's Metro One, go ahead. An emergency room doctor shares his take on the shortage of ambulances. Live life at Keho Place, Kaka'ako's transformation to a modern, architecturally diverse transit station neighborhood. Now under construction, choose from tower or townhouse living, with convenient shops, restaurants, and a future transit station. Keho Place offers a unique urban contemporary lifestyle in the heart of Honolulu. Aloha, I'm Stanford Carr. We're proud to present Keoho Place, an innovative new way to live. Stanford Carr Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. Whatever your own goals are in life, for you or your family, get to work, stick with it, and make it happen. I've always been excited about building. It's a challenge, but I, I love challenges. You gotta be willing to work hard. We expect the workers out there to produce. Coming to work every day is hard work. So you have to be responsible and be on time. Be on time. And be very reliable. Come early. And then show up with a good attitude. Having pride in yourself, in the work you do. I don't mind pounding nails. We all want to get the same job done. As long as you pull your weight and be safe about it. A lot of dedication and hard work. I'm able to provide for my family. I was able to buy my first home, which is awesome. I, I feel I have a brighter future. A better lifestyle for me and my family. I can see myself going somewhere. If you like what you do, I don't consider it hard work at all. Better lives and better futures. Build a better Hawaii for all of us. A message from the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. When I retired, I thought I'd be taking it easy. But with family and friends, 
I've never been busier. So having my doctors and clinics all nearby is more important than ever. At HMSA, we make sure you have convenient access to the health care you need. No other plan offers a larger network of doctors, hospitals, and neighborhood clinics. I've counted on HMSA all these years, and I still do. To learn more, visit HMSA.com. When it's busy for paramedics out on the road, you can count on it getting busy in here. The Queens Medical Center is the state's major trauma hospital. Doctors and nurses in the emergency room are always within earshot of this radio. Uh, they call in, this thing goes off, everybody's ears perk up. In this business, time is the enemy. The paramedics usually have about three minutes to call on the Medicom, figure out exactly what they have, and give me the information. Dr. Ronald Kuroda has been on both sides of that call, having worked as an EMT before going to medical school. Paramedics for people out there are one of the most important things that can be out there to help people. They can start the treatment there on the scene. Some of these things matter just a few minutes before they get to the hospital. Stopping bleeding, even starting CPR or doing that defibrillation with electric shocks, that can bring somebody back. So they're critical in the chain of survival. That chain of survival is tested daily as paramedics flow into the emergency room with patient after patient. So candidly, are we close to a breaking point without more equipment and support? It's getting pretty close there. With the population growth of Oahu as well as with all the tourism, there's a lot of people on this small rock and it would be great if they could always get reliable care when they needed it. Perhaps no one understands that need better than EMS Chief Dean Nakano. He started with the department in 1980 and says the resources have not kept pace with demand. In 37 years, we've gained five full-time ambulances and two part-time ambulances, whereas our population has doubled almost. With just five ambulances assigned to Metro Honolulu, covering that population has become a game of chess. So our biggest problem right now is Honolulu. When these five ambulances are out, we need to pull in from the outlying areas. When a team is dispatched out of its coverage area, the whole system is strained and people calling for help may just have to wait. So that leaves, as you can see, if you take Kaneohe out of the picture, Kahuku's area just grew exponentially. EMS in town is contracted to respond to an incident within 10 minutes, 15 minutes in suburban areas, and 20 minutes in rural communities. But right now, they're only meeting those mandates 70% of the time. I, I think people don't understand that we were really a small division. We have less than 300 people working. Whereas the fire department and the police department have more, almost 2,000 each. And, you know, that's, that's, that's how it is. Because there are so many more of them, firefighters are often the first to arrive and while they may be able to stabilize a patient and save lives they do not have advanced medical training carry no medications and cannot transport patients to the hospital the city contracts with amr a private ambulance service but those teams are primarily used for non-emergency transports and every time they're dispatched it takes more money out of the ems budget how many more ambulances would you say that you, you need? At this time, I would say five, at least five. We could use ten, but at least five. To bring yourself to what capacity? Where, where you say this, uh, the public would, wouldn't be in danger. We would have enough resources that whenever a call came in, we would have an ambulance available to respond. The state last granted funds for a new ambulance five years ago, and that ambulance was only designated part-time. Since then, the Department of Health, which oversees EMS, has asked for more funding to expand the fleet, but time and again, the answer is no. To start up a new unit, it can cost between 2.5 to $3 million. Is that a staggering amount to you? 
Not when you're talking about lives, saving lives. Then what's the problem? Well, you know, I don't know. I have no answer for that. Still ahead, what is the answer? Why is this agency not getting the funding it says it so desperately needs? I think there are a lot of legislators who are very committed, but then it becomes an issue of it's one of many priorities. We follow the money when we come back. Healthier is ordinary lives made possible by extraordinary care. For decades, our integrated team of experts has helped cancer patients become cancer survivors. Hawaii Pacific Health. Live life at Keho Place, Kaka'ako's transformation to a modern, architecturally diverse transit station neighborhood. Now under construction, choose from tower or townhouse living with convenient shops, restaurants, and a future transit station. Keho Place offers a unique urban contemporary lifestyle in the heart of Honolulu. Aloha, I'm Stanford Carr. We're proud to present Keho Place, an innovative new way to live. Stanford Car Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. Over the last seven years, Hawaiian Electric has invested $1.5 billion to update and upgrade the electric grid. Thousands of poles, transmission lines, and equipment have been replaced, reducing the number of outages. However, if you do encounter a downed power line, call 911 and stay at least three car lengths away. Remember, the line can still be energized, even though it appears harmless. Find out more at hawaiianelectric.com slash resilience. EMS is a city department overseen by the State Department of Health, funded through the legislature. State lawmakers say there simply is no money for more ambulances, and given the uncertainty at the federal level, there could soon be even less. Budget cuts might be coming down from the federal government where we will have a $230 million hole in our Medicaid system. That's basic medical services yep. to people. Right. You could say that the $3 million that we would need for an ambulance um, service line is, is, can be found somewhere. But if we're plugging a hole for $230 million, that $230 million is more important probably in some people's minds. State House Majority Leader Della Albalati says she's sympathetic to the challenges facing paramedics in the field. Her own husband is a nurse at Queens, but she says there are limits to tax dollars. You know, to have a serious discussion um, to fund all of these needs means we as a community also have to have a serious discussion about how do we generate revenues. And that, of course, is how do we tax, you know, and, and that's the kind of conversation, that's a tough conversation to have. Perhaps another tough conversation needs to happen about priorities and waste. Right now, the state is paying down a $38 million general obligation bond for money borrowed to pay for the defunct Hawaii Super Ferry. All told, that debt will cost taxpayers nearly $63 million by the time it's finally paid off in 2028. $63 million could pay to outfit not one, not two, not 10 or 15, but 21 new ambulances in Hawaii. But right now, we get nothing for those millions spent by Hawaii taxpayers except a bill. And what priority do you think EMS should have in public funding? I think EMS should have a high priority in public funding. The other things I think we need to look at though is how do we prevent the need for the need, the use of EMS services? How do we keep our population as healthy as possible? How do we prevent the types of uh, trauma or injury that could be prevented so that we don't need to use the EMS services as much? So if the public thinks there's a, an easy bad guy out there, that's just not the case. I, I don't think there, there, there's any easy target and there's certainly no easy solutions anymore. The Department of Health is responsible not just for Honolulu EMS, but for emergency services throughout the state. Last year, DOH lobbied for new ambulances 
for the Big Island and Kauai, leaving Honolulu off the list. Although its request was denied, it has no plans to change tactics in the upcoming session. Why is that? The counties have come together um, to, identify, to look at the data, to identify where the highest priorities are for response times, and the group decided that it would be Kauai County as well as Puna, and that Honolulu County would be next. Not this year, but next year. Yes. Assuming this year's Assuming request that was approved. Assuming that it would be successful, yes. That assumption is by no means a safe one. Is it your prediction that they will be successful at the next session in getting more ambulances? I, I hate to predict anything, um, especially when it comes to funding. I think, again, the nature of the competing priorities during the legislative process makes it very difficult. Without change, more paramedics are expected to leave. It takes a toll on you because people want to do good at their job. And if you cannot handle the physical and the mental anymore and you have an opportunity to leave and have a healthier lifestyle, people are gonna, people are gonna do so. There is a sense within EMS ranks that if the public knew more about paramedic work, the much needed help would be available. We saved someone's life. We delivered a baby. We, you know, we helped someone start breathing again. We stopped somebody from bleeding to death. It's, it's something that um, the public doesn't recognize until it actually happens to them. People drawn to the world of emergency response don't seem comfortable complaining. It's not in their nature. But at the same time, they recognize that now more than ever, their story needs to be told. Every man and woman in EMS is dedicated to a single goal, saving lives. It's time for us to ask, when will their 911 call be answered? I'm Matt Levi. For Yunji Denise and our entire team, thank you for joining us. Good night. Levi Investigates is brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. Hawaiian Electric. The Hawaiian Electric companies creating a smarter, stronger, and more resilient electric grid. Hawaii Pacific Health. Creating a healthier Hawaii. The Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters. Hawaii's Carpenters Union. HMSA. Caring for our kupuna and Hawaii's families. It's our promise and our privilege. Kamehameha Schools, Stanford Car Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii.